Hey, I am Lina and I'm here with Aptech Tutorials. I'm here to teach you guys how to use the uh, student code area of the Microbit Classroom. This a specific page has a lot to offer for educators and teachers out there. So if you want to learn how to use that specific page in more detail and what it offers you, go ahead and stick around. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel so that you guys don't miss anything. All right, let's go ahead and get started. All right, so let's look into more detail what the student code area really offers us this page. There is so much going on in here that I feel it needed a video on its own. So the first thing we want to notice is that this area is where the, stu the teacher, the instructor can come and go ahead and look at what the students are working and it would load the code as students are changing it automatically. For example, if I go to Jeremy here, uh, he has some code that is swinging here. So let's go ahead and go to Jeremy and add the this block here. I'll go back here. It would update it with what Jeremy just did. So there it goes. There's the heart. And that's one of the ways that the teachers can go ahead and look at what their students are doing at and what, where they're running the lesson. Now, another thing to note is that the student's code that you're viewing here will be highlighted in or solidly highlighted in magenta so that you know which code you're looking at. It's also good to know that the students are, are, are actually online. We highlight it in green and Right here at the bottom of their name, you'll be able to see whether their project is in progress or if they're finished. And if they're finished, you automatically know that they're finished because it'll be like a little emoji character on the side. And this, the student gets to choose. It's based on whether they're satisfied with the activity or as an instructor, you can use it for how they're feeling if you want to go ahead and give instructions on that. But the idea is to see how they felt about this activity. And then you have the, the students that are offline are highlighted in gray. The outline is gray and it'll say offline. So for the students that are offline and are finished, you just see them over here on the bottom. So basically what it does, it brings all the students that are online on the top and all the students that are, are offline are on the bottom as a group. And it'll always be in ABC order, so alphabetical order. So you'll be able to notice that. and. Isaac is highlighted in green because he already finished and he is offline because he is in the group of the online students so you'll be able to know which students are online and which ones are offline so that's a good thing to note another thing to note on this page is that if you clicked on for example let's go ahead and look at Isaac's code and you're like well they didn't quite follow the instructions as expected this, then they said they're done, but they're not actually done. And as the instructor, you have the ability to go here on this icon here with the pencil and click on when change their progress from finished to in progress and then apply. And then you just let them know that they didn't finish and they should, they should be able to come back online with the details that you provided them by giving them the dashboard details here. So, as you can see, since you've changed the progress to Isaac's status to in progress, it will show him that he's on offline now. So now let's go ahead and look at this here. So let's say you as an instructor are helping a student or two students are working together or you have a group of students working together and you have one student working on one part and another student working on another part of the code so you want to go ahead and share the code let's say we want to share alex code with jeremy so you're going to go here to share students code and i don't want to share with lena i just want to share with jeremy so we'll just choose jeremy and you can choose all students or you can go ahead and click on the drop down here and you can decide who you want to share it with and then just send the code to them and it'll tell you that it sent the code and then your student will get a message saying that they received code from you now 
The last part I want to talk about here, which is very important, I believe is one of the tools that you can use as an instructor to show um, your school or parents or students, kind of like a progress report for, for reporting, is here. If you click on this, doc this download report from, for all students, you're going to go ahead and download a uh, document, a Word document. Then you can go ahead and open either in Word or you can open it in Google Docs. I'm sure there's other tools out there that you can use to go ahead and open. And I believe it downloaded. So let's go ahead and open that. So the, what you will see in here is you're going to go ahead and see first the, uh, the name of your activity and when this document was saved. So the date here is based on when you actually save the document. The number of students that are enrolled. So this is the number of students that are actually in the class, not the number of students that were present during that day. So this is for that day only. So note that. It is only for that day that you save the report. And then, so if you want to save a report where you can actually take a, the attendance and show the attendance, I suggest you do it at the beginning when all the students have joined and you go ahead and take a save a copy of this document so you can go ahead and see who was present and who was absent. So let's go ahead and look at this. So then the next thing you're going to see is the users and it's obviously going to show the teacher first because you're the one who started this and it won't show any status based on your whether you were present or not or progress because you're the instructor. And then it'll show all the names of your students here, their status, whether they were present or absent and then where their work is at, whether it's in working progress or if, uh, if it's in finished. Now each of the names is a link that as a teacher you can go ahead and click on to go to the code. But we're going to go ahead and scroll down. So the next thing you'll see is your code as the instructor. What did you give your students? This is the initial code that you gave your students. and. This is useful because you can either share with other instructors so that they can kind of model after your stuff or you can save it as kind of a this is what I gave my students kind of example and then what they did with that example. So now if we keep scrolling down, it'll show the rest of the students code and it cuts off and I need to figure out why that cuts off. Maybe it would change the layout to horse landscape their pictures I believe let's change them to lamps yes they're pictures so if we change it to landscape it should show the whole thing so um I do suggest you change them to landscape to make sure you see everything and then obviously you can move things around as you want right because they're only pictures so note that it's a, if your program is very big and you require a lot of space go ahead and change the layout of your Word document into landscape so you can see everything in your in your document but let's go ahead and go down and then this is your first student it's gonna show you what they have in the session and where the status is they were present for this session so the session that you saved the document off they were present for this session and they were, their work is currently in progress and it's gonna show you what they're doing here what they have so far and then we'll go down and here it'll tell you the name of the student and the status of whether they were present for that specific session you saved and where their work is at and basically you continue going down and you'll see all your students down here and their status and their code so the reason they provide you with links at the top is for example if you have 32 students you don't want to be scrolling through all 32 students to be able to find let's say Lena right so I'll give you the ability to just click on Lina and it'll send you right to the bottom of it where Lina actually is at. We should have like a back button where it will take you right back to the top but you have to scroll all the way to the top again to be able to get back to that list of students. And that's it for that uh, report document that you get from there. That was a really quick uh, tutorial on how to use the student code area. I feel like it required its own video so you can kind of see what tools and and little things here and there you can use as an instructor 
I feel like it does give you the ability to go ahead and check out what your students are doing as they're coding, kind of try to figure out their thinking process as they're doing the code, and then go ahead and help them out if they need help because you'll know exactly where they are and you'll be able to see where the mistakes are. And then also give you the ability to go ahead and download a document where you can go ahead and report it for the student's uh, purpose if they want to keep the code or for the parents so they want to if the parent wants to see what the students are actually working on this is a great tool to give you the power to go ahead and do that and um, yeah so that's uh, all for today thank you so much for joining us and like always don't forget to like this video subscribe to our channel and uh, we'll come up with other stuff for you guys I do have another video for instructors based on the microbiome classroom that I'm trying to put together. It is based on tips and tricks here and there. I've noticed some things that are very specific to microbiome classroom that I would like to show you guys, kind of to keep a smooth transition going forward so that you don't have so many issues when you do start your classrooms. All right, guys, have a good one.